A lot of people have a lot to say about Billy Napier and his future at the University of Florida. Sometimes those people are clued in to what's truly going on at UF, and sometimes, like today's situation, we see someone who completely shows their ignorance. Let's talk about what happened, what the truth is, and why it matters. A rather infamous barstool personality went on a rant this past week about UF and Billy Napier and the future of the Gators. Brandon Walker put out a video in which he had some thoughts about what will happen at UF this season. Let's watch that really quickly. All right, college football 2023 team previews. And if you want to see a team that might sneaky get their coach fired this year, it's this one, the Florida Gators. The Florida Gators might have to fire Billy Napier at some point this year. They're, A, not going to be very good. They couldn't win with a top four quarterback last year in Anthony Richardson. But look at this schedule. They're never going to be in front of it. They're never going to be in front of it. They're going to chase all season long. They're never going to have a winning record, perhaps. They start off at Utah, loss. Then they win a game. They play Tennessee at home, loss. Play, win another game, play Kentucky on the road, loss. Two and three. We're, ha- we're through September. We haven't had a winning record yet. Then let's say you beat Vanderbilt. You get to three and three. Now you're at South Carolina and Georgia and Jacksonville. Two losses. So you're three and five at the very best. After that, you got to get back on, on the horse. You got Arkansas and LSU back to back. At best, that's one and one. So you, you're four and six or something right now. You got Missouri. Say you beat them five, and then Florida State's going to wear your ass out at the end of the season. Five and seven might be best case scenario for Billy Napier. Sorry, ass at Florida. And if he didn't have a five star recruit signed right now, quarterback DJ Lagway, well he's not signed but committed. If he didn't have that guy committed, he might get fired. Like if that guy decommits and he goes five and seven or four and eight, which he's going to. He could get fired. I can't believe they fired Dan Mullen for this crap. All right, (laughs) let's get into this. But before we do, we would love to hear from you down in the comments. Do you think Billy Napier is on the hot seat like Walker claims he is here? Let's chat about it and let me know. All right, first of all, UF isn't firing Napier after year two for several reasons. All right, first and foremost, This may be the most uh, important reason why they are not firing Billy Napier. They would owe him $30 million. UF is still paying out previous coaches. They are not going to put themselves on the hook for $30 million to Billy Napier. They just are not. They would never have even structured his contract like that to begin with if they thought there was even a remote chance they were going to be getting rid of him after year two. So for financial reasons, no matter what, unless something really catastrophic happens, they are not firing Billy Napier after year two. They don't want to owe him $30 million. But another really important reason why they're for sure not firing Billy Napier after this season, regardless of what happens on the field, is that two years is not enough time for a full rebuild. The University of Florida believes that this program needed a full rebuild. That is why they brought in Billy Napier. Billy Napier is a very different type of coach than the last several coaches that UF has employed. Billy Napier is a CEO. He is someone that is going to restructure the program from top to bottom. He has begun that process. He began that process day one when UF brought him in, okay? We are seeing the type of CEO he is, and he's having great results with that. He restructured how his staff is. We talk about the Billy Napier army, the recruiting army. It's true. He has so many people working for him. He doubled or tripled the size that Dan Mullen had underneath him. He has been incredibly innovative with social media. He has been an innovative recruiting wise. He has demanded a lot of changes from the moment that he was hired that he got from the university because this is their long-term solution. They are willing to buy into Billy Napier's long-term vision, which includes giving him enough time to actually build out that dream. He was also hired because UF believed that Mullen couldn't recruit at the level that UF needed to compete for championships. And because we know that that is one of the very main reasons that Dan Mullen was fired, I don't think that UF expected Billy Napier to win right away. 
They didn't think that Mullen was recruiting the type of talent for Mullen to win. So why in the world would they think that Mullen recruited the type of talent that Napier could win with? They don't. They thought that Billy Napier was going to come in, he was going to get some great recruiting classes, transfer portal pickups, get his guys in place first, and then the winning would happen. But listen, I also think that there's another piece of this puzzle that nobody's even talking to talking about. Brandon Walker graduated from Mississippi State, all right? So he's a Dan Mullen guy. He liked Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. Florida, being like a bigger brother to, to Mississippi State, had no problem stealing Dan Mullen away to bring him into UF. Mississippi State now doesn't have Dan Mullen, but UF doesn't either. And I think that Walker's a little bit bitter about this. Had UF never gone knocking on Old Miss or on Mississippi State's door, Dan Mullen's door to begin with, they would still have Strickland as their AD. They'd still have Dan Mullen as their football coach. So I really think some of this is just bitterness that UF takes the employees they want when they want them. I also really don't agree with some of the losses that Brandon Walker has UF taking. So if you watch that video just a second ago, he thinks that Florida loses to Utah. He thinks that Florida loses to Tennessee. He thinks Florida loses to Kentucky, South Carolina, Georgia. Thinks it's best case scenario for Florida to go one and one with Arkansas and LSU. And he thinks Florida State beats Florida as well. I think he's wrong on some of these. And, and listen, I'm not here to tell you that Florida's going to have a 10-win season, that they're going to beat all their rivals, and that all the Gators' problems are fixed. That is not what I'm saying at all. I am just also telling you I don't think Walker's correct about a five-win season. And some of the losses that he thinks are guarantees, I don't agree with. First of all, the Utah game. I think that Utah has a better chance to win that football game than Florida does. I do not, under any circumstances, think that it is a foregone conclusion that Utah beats Florida. Next up is Tennessee. I also think that that is a toss-up game. I think that the Tennessee program is trending in the right direction, okay? I think that they are a little bit ahead in their rebuild of where Florida is. But it's in Gainesville, at night, in the swamp. I don't think that this is by any means a foregone conclusion that Tennessee wins this game. I think it's a toss-up. Kentucky, Florida should win. Is Kentucky a decent team? Yes, they are a decent team. Florida should not lose to Kentucky, though. I don't think that that is an automatic loss. I do think that Florida loses to Georgia. I think that South Carolina is a toss-up game. Now, could, could the Gamecocks beat Florida? Absolutely. Are the Gamecocks trending in the right direction? Absolutely. But that's another toss-up game. I think Florida beats Arkansas. I don't think that that's a toss-up game. I don't think that that's, uh, you know, a best-case scenario. And LSU is going to be hard. I think that LSU is a team that's potentially going to be in contention for a national title this year. I think that they are a team that can challenge the Georgias, the Alabamas. I think that's going to be a really tough game for Florida to walk away with a victory at. But I also don't think it's a foregone conclusion that for sure LSU beats Florida, like I feel about the Georgia game. And FSU, honestly, Florida had their worst team that they've had in a very long time last year. They played an FSU team who was the best team that Florida State had fielded in a very long time last year. And that game came down to the very end. I know you Florida State fans are sweating right now and you totally disagree with what I'm saying, but I don't care. That was a close game and it's a rivalry game. So to come out right now in the beginning of the summer and say that it's a foregone conclusion that Florida State beats Florida is stupid in my opinion. Opinion. That game's always going to be close because of the rivalry, but I honestly think that these teams are not nearly as far apart as the media wants you to believe. And, uh, you know, as we've talked about before, honestly, unless Napier rides a scooter, you know, naked through the center of University Avenue with, you know, a co-ed on his back or something like that, he's going to be the coach at Florida after year two. He just is. Unless something crazy happens off the field, which by the way, that was completely in jest. I don't think Billy Napier would ever do anything like that, but it's going to take some wild, crazy scenario or Florida losing like, I don't know, every single game and losing the locker room for there to be even a remote chance that Billy Napier is not Florida's coach heading into his year three. I just think that it's not 
realistic. This is a rebuild. The powers that be at UF know that this is a rebuild. Rational Gator fans know that this is a rebuild. So getting on the Napier train, cheering him on, and looking for progress is what most Gator fans should be doing. Now, UF did get a very surprising endorsement this past week. But just before we get into that, we've got a goal of getting to 5,000 subscribers by the time UF kicks off the season in Utah. If you're a Gator fan and you want to stay up to date, hit that button and help us reach our goal. This past week, Urban Meyer said that Florida has got, quote, what it takes and that they have a great coach right now. Urban Meyer urged Gator fans to hang in there with Billy Napier as he rebuilds the program. I think that this is really important for a couple of reasons, right? This is what we've continued to preach on here. This is really important. We cannot stay in the cycle of getting a new coach every three to four years. That's what it's been since Urban Meyer left UF. We've talked about this on here. At some point, it becomes less attractive of a job if a coach knows that he only has max two or three, four years to completely rebuild a program. The job becomes less valuable. But I think this is really important. And this conversation that Urban had happened with Buddy Martin, who is a friend of our show, but really more importantly, a really good friend of Urban Meyer's. He wrote Urban Meyer's autobiography, He Urban's Way. He actually uh, wrote Steve Spurrier's books as well. Urban is going to have a very candid and honest conversation when he is talking to his friend, Buddy Martin. So the fact that he says that he thinks that Gator fans really need to hang in there and that Billy Napier is the right guy for this rebuild, should resonate with Gator fans. Urban knows what it takes, obviously, to build something at UF. He did it. He took over a Ron Zook program and transformed it from the inside out. He knows that it starts with recruiting. And listen, I don't want to put words in Urban's mouth, but I have to imagine that he hasn't been thrilled seeing that something that he worked so hard to build, not really being able to compete on a national level since he left. I think Urban Meyer wants to see Florida do well. Urban Meyer wants to see this rebuild happen. He wants to see the championship tradition that he helped create come back to the University of Florida. And Urban's ultimately right. UF has to give Billy more than the standard three years to see if he can turn it around. He's building this thing the right way. And his recruiting prowess is pretty evident. We've seen what he's able to do in a year and a half that he's been at, in Gainesville, and there are no doubts that this roster is going to completely turn over. He has worked so hard on the recruiting trail in the transfer portal to make sure he has the guys that he wants on this roster that fit the schemes that he wants to run, that have the kind of character and uh, that contribute to the culture that he wants to build. These are the personalities that he thinks clicks with his coaches and with his the current team. He put so much thought into this. We talk about chess versus checkers. I think that that's what Billy Napier does with recruiting. And I think that that's what Urban Meyer does. And I think that Urban Meyer recognizes that in Billy Napier. And guys, he's right. We need to give Billy Napier the time that he it takes to rebuild a program. What are your thoughts? Do you side more with Brandon Walker of Barstool Sports or with championship coach Urban Meyer. Do you think Napier is anywhere close to being on the hot seat right now? Let's chat about it down in the comments. UF is in the middle of another big recruiting weekend, and we've got some more content coming out this week to recap it. So make sure you are locked in with the channel. If you missed our video on Napier throwing a warning out about this upcoming season, click right here to watch it.